Welcome to another video. Let's do algebra again. We want to find the value of x for which this equation is equal to x. And x is a real number. So, what should we do? Upon looking at this problem, I was hesitant to rewrite this problem as square root. Because you see, when you write something like this, you ne don't necessarily get real numbers. Your answers could be imaginary. But whenever you switch it to a square root sign, well, that's when you start worrying about, can my, my x be um, a negative number? Would I get imaginary numbers? That's where you start get, having trouble with whatever answer that you get. So it might be a bit unsafe to switch this from the power to a square root sign. But switching it to a square root sign makes your life a lot easier. I'm just going to leave it. Although it's, it's really clumsy to leave it that way. But I'm going to leave it. Let's get into the video. My very first move will, try, will be to try and rewrite the inside. Because this is scary. When you have double t or binomials, scary. Let's make it a single term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is, if I make this a single fraction, x times x will be x squared minus 1 over x raised to 1 half, right? Plus, we do the same thing. This is going to be x minus 1 over x raised to 1 half. And this is going to be equal to x. Nothing to worry about. Now, Fractions are not nice. So if we can find a way to get rid of the fractions, we'll be happy. And how do you do that? Well, I can multiply each of these terms by x raised to power 1 half. That way, it can sneak in here and cancel this x. So watch this. I'm going to have x raised to power 1 half multiplied by x squared minus 1 over x raised to power 1 half. And by the laws of exponents, I can actually put these two together. I can just put this multiplication here, remove the 1 half here, and put them together. And by our algebra rules and arithmetic that we do, this x can cancel this x, so that by the time I multiply each term, by x to the 1 half, what is left is just going to be x squared minus 1 raised to the power 1 half. That's what we're going to do. If I multiply this by x to the 1 half, I'm going to do the same thing here. x to the 1 half times x minus 1 over x to the 1 half. Then I have to multiply this by x to the 1 half also. So the next line is just going to be x squared minus 1 to the 1 half plus x minus 1 to the 1 half. And your answer here is x to the 3 halves. So that crazy expression has looked a lot nicer. Not the greatest, but it is better than what we started with, right? Okay. See, this would have been square root expressions, but now I think I'm going to square both sides. Okay? I'm going to square both sides. And remember that squaring both sides, definitely you'll have some extraneous solutions showing up at the end, and then we're going to check if they're correct. Okay, that's not trouble for us, but we just have to square both sides at this point. If we square both sides, what do we get? We're going to have... Let me square. Now, note this about squaring both sides. Let's say we have a plus b equals c. Definitely on the right-hand side, you're going to get c squared. But here, you're going to have a plus b times a plus b. Now, watch what usually happens. It is a times a, you have a squared. Then you're going to have plus 2ab plus b squared. So you always have the square of the first term, the square of the second term, and in the middle, you have twice the product of the two terms. That's what we're going to have here. So we're going to have the square of the first term, which removes the, the square root, and we're just going to have x squared minus 1. 
Here also we're going to have this term b squared, which is going to be x minus 1. Okay, so what's in the middle? It's going to be 2 times the product of the two terms. So let's see, x squared minus 1 multiplied by x minus 1. If we multiply, so that's our a, b, right? We, we, let's put the 2. So what is this? This is going to be x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1 all multiplied by 2. So what's in the middle here? I have to expand this. So what's in the middle here is going to be this. It's going to be 2. Oh, the square root sign is still going to be on top of them. Remember, they had square roots. Oh, okay. So because this one is not squared, we're going to have the square root on top of this term here. So this is the square root times the square root. And it's just going to be a giant square root. So we still have our square root sign, the one half, or no square root, one half, remember. So it's going to be 2 times, this is going to be, um, what's that? x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1 raised to power 1 half. Okay, then we have plus x minus 1. And your answer is going to be, remember when we square this, this denominator disappears. What we have left is just x cubed. I think we can do one more move here by collecting. Let's keep the one that has the square root sign or the power on, the, on this side and bring everything else here. So see what's going to happen. We're going to end up with 2 times x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1 raised to 1 half will now be equal to, I'm going to move everything over, so I'm going to start with x cubed minus x squared. I'm going to have minus x. Now we have minus 1 here and minus 1 here. That's going to go over and become plus 2. So we can officially have, oh, watch this there's still a raised to power one half sitting here. I need to get rid of it by squaring both sides. But this is incredibly long. By the time I expand all the whole thing, it's gonna to be tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do is try to see if I can shorten this. How? Look at the terms, x cubed minus x minus, x squared rather, minus x. It's showing up here too. So I can replace all that with just one letter. In fact, I'm gonna replace everything in here. Oh, look, this is plus one. This is plus two. So it means this one is just one more than this. They just added one to this and it became this. So if we replace this expression with u, we're gonna have two let me write it first. Let u be equal to this whole thing, x cubed. You could actually do it for this or this, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna write this as u x cubed minus x squared minus x plus one. Which means I can write this as two u raised to one half is now equal to, the right hand side is u plus one, and then you get plus two. So it's gonna be u plus one. You see, this is a smart way to do this complicated expansion, so you don't have to write a lot, especially if you're fortunate to have similar expressions. Just cut as many as you can. So here, what do we have? Now I can square both sides. So I'm gonna say squaring, squaring both sides, that is both sides, not BS, okay? If you square both sides, this is gonna be squared, it becomes four. This is squared, it becomes just U. This is squared, it's gonna become, now when you square this, it's gonna become U squared um, plus two U plus one. Let's collect everything to one side. If I move this over, we're gonna have U squared um, minus two U plus one equals zero. Oh, 
This is a perfect square. It's u minus 1, right? So this is u minus 1 squared. That's a perfect square, and it's equal to 0. So that means u is equal to 1. We only have u equals 1 as the only thing that came out of this. I was expecting multiple answers. <laughs> nice. So, what do we have? This makes life a lot easier because now we can go back to the claim we made and say that u, let's block this away. So now we say that u equals this, which is 1. So we're going to just write x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1 is equal to 1. Well, there's 1 on both sides. I can subtract 1 from both sides. I end up with x cubed minus x minus x equals 0. Can I factor something out? Yes. x. I have x squared minus... Oh, come on. I have x squared minus x minus 1 left. So there are two options. It's either x is equal to 0 or x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. And I can immediately tell you that x is not equal to 0, not because I checked, but because the question came with a problem. You see, x is in the denominator. It cannot be 0. So that's my only reason. x cannot be 0. I'm just going to write it. x is not equal to 0. Bum. So the only other option I have is to go investigate what x is here. So I say, therefore, x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0. But this cannot be factored. So I'm just going to use the quadratic formula for it. So I know that x will be equal to minus b. Minus b will be minus minus 1 plus or minus the square root of minus 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times c. What is c? Minus 1 all over 2 times 1. Okay, I didn't have to write all of that. You know the quadratic formula, but in case you didn't know it, there you have it. So this is 1 plus or minus. This is 1 plus 4. That's 5. Square root of 5 divided by 2 times 1 is 2. So we have x1 is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Or x2 equals 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. By the way, remember I said I was not going to use the square root sign because x might be negative. Yes, we don't want x to be negative because if x is negative, it cannot be in either of these actually because of when. You take the square root of this, it's going to end up being negative. This is a negative number. Negative minus negative is negative and you end up with, um, because this is smaller, you end up with whatever. You just going to end up with a negative number in this one especially. And it's going to give you imaginary numbers. And because we're dealing with real numbers, this cannot be an answer. Why? Because you see, 1 minus the square root of 5 is a negative number. The square root of 5 is bigger than 1. I think it's 2 point something. Okay. Not sure what, what that is anymore. I used to know that. 2.26? I don't know. Okay, and that's it. So because we can't have a negative number, this cannot be an answer. X is greater than 0. So this is not a valid answer. So the only valid answer is X1. And this is a special number. Well, they're both special. But well, this is the one that we usually focus on, the positive version. That's the golden ratio, okay? And this is the golden ratio, which is my flower, which some people call phi. <laughs> I know it's phi, but I like to say it that way. And this is it. That's your answer. There's no other option. I hope this was fun and it brought back and you learned something, at least some skill in you doing this substitution because this would have been the toughest part of this exercise, squaring both sides. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.